In this video, we'll talk about digestive system of frog. In frogs, digestive system is made up of elementary canal and the glands. But before we draw all the parts, we will start with the buccal cavity. If the mouth is open, we find that upper jaw and lower jaw, they are triangular. And the upper jaw has teeth. Here, there is a bone and this bone is called maxilla and on maxilla there are teeth. These teeth are triangular, they are all of the same shape and they are superficially attached to the bone. So this is upper jaw and this is the lower jaw. Lower jaw is without teeth. The teeth which are present, they are present only in the upper jaw. The teeth which are there, they are attached to the maxilla bone. So they are known as maxillary teeth. They are all are of the same shape, size. So we call them homodont that means all teeth are of the same shape and size they are triangular and they are superficially attached to the bone that means the tooth is just attached to the bone superficially that means if something happens or something hits to this tooth it is going to fall off so we call them homodont because they are alike they are acrodont that means superficially attached and these teeth are going to regrow as many times as they fall off. So they are polyphyodont. So when we talk about the teeth in case of frogs, they are attached to maxilla bone which is only in the upper jaw. Lower jaw is without teeth. All the teeth are superficially attached so they are acrodont. They regrow every time they fall off. That means they are poly, polyphyodont. And they all are alike. So homodont. And attached to maxilla. So they are called maxillary teeth. Now in this part we also find the openings here. These are the internal nares. Externally in the snout region we made nostrils. So these openings they are actually the openings of internal nares and in the upper jaw we also find two large bulges these are actually the bulge inside which is due to those big eyes so these are the bulges of the eye the eyeballs now here in this part we find an opening and this is the gullet. Gullet is the opening of the elementary canal. So this is going to lead into a little pharynx and then esophagus, the system which we will draw a little later. Lower jaw has tongue which is attached. The tongue is attached anteriorly and is free posteriorly. Our tongue is attached posteriorly and the anterior tip part is free. In case of frogs, the tongue is attached anteriorly and is free posteriorly. That means in the jaw, the tongue is placed like this. It is attached here and it is free from the posterior line. So that when they have to capture the insect, the tongue can be thrown out and the insect is going to stick to it and then the tongue is withdrawn. The tongue, the buccal cavity has mucus glands. So here in the buccal cavity, there are mucus glands. And these mucus glands are going to secrete mucus 
which is going to soften the food as well as it is going to keep the cavity moist because buccal cavity is also going to help in respiration. For respiration, the surface has to be moist. So these mucus glands are going to help in that also. Sweat, uh, sorry, the salivary glands are absent in case of frogs. Salivary glands are absent in frogs because there is no digestion which is going to take place in the buccal cavity. Frogs are carnivores and because they are carnivores, the digestive tract or the elementary canal is short because the longest elementary canal is of herbivores, then of omnivores and the shortest is in case of carnivores. So we are starting from this gullet. Now when we draw the gullet, it is going to lead into a narrow esophagus and the esophagus leads into a long tubular stomach. So this opening is gullet. This is esophagus. And there is a longish tubular stomach. In stomach, hydrochloric acid enzymes like pepsin would be secreted. So here, hydrochloric acid, pepsin, these enzymes would be secreted. That means digestion is going to start here. After stomach starts the intestine. Intestine has two parts, small intestine and large intestine. The small intestine has first part which is duodena and then there is ileum part. Ileum is little coil. Duodenum is not that coil. Ileum is a tubular coil structure. So these two parts make the small intestine. This is duodenum. And this is ileum. Ileum where absorption takes place. Now coming to the last part. Last part is large intestine and it is represented by the rectum. So large intestine has only one part that is rectum. Now in this rectum we would find that there are two more things which are going to open. Excretory system that means from the kidney whatever waste is going to come that also is going to come here and from the reproductive system the gametes are also going to come here but that we will add up later on. So this is the tubular part small intestine has duodenum and ileum large intestine has only rectum. In duodenum opens a duct and this duct is a common duct which is bringing the secretion from two places that is from liver that is bile and from pancreas the pancreatic juice. So here is this pancreas which is there and the liver is large and has two lobes. So one lobe and the other lobe and these two lobes are connected. So this is a large, this is the largest gland that is liver. Attached to this lobe is the gallbladder. So from the liver is going to come a duct which is going to bring bile and from pancreas the duct is going to bring, bring the pancreatic juice. And the common duct opens into duodenum. This common duct is known as hepatopancreatic duct and this duct brings bile and pancreatic juice. That means in the stomach there would be enzymes like pepsin, in duodenum pancreas is going to pour all the enzymes which are going to digest carbohydrates, proteins and fats and bile which is coming from liver would help in emulsification. Ileum is the place where absorption takes place. 
absorption of that digested food will take place in the ileum part and rectum stores the undigested food. So when we say the digestive system of frogs has two parts. One is the elementary canal that means this long tubular part and the glands. Glands are liver and pancreas. When we talk of our digestive system we also include salivary glands. Where in case of frogs, salivary glands are absent. So we will have only two glands which we need to talk about. That is liver and pancreas. And both of them, they pour their secretion through a common duct into duodenum. When frogs feed on insects, they simply swallow it. Because the teeth which are there, they are only on the upper jaw. These teeth are not going to help in mastication or chewing. So they simply swallow that food. So when the food comes here in the stomach and duodenum, digestion would take place. Ileum would help in absorption. In the ileum part, villi are also present so that the surface area for absorption of food is more. And here the undigested food would be stored. Now this opening is called cloaca. And we have already talked of that this is a common opening of three systems. So digestive system is very well developed. They are carnivores and that is why the elementary canal is not that long. Buccal cavity has many important things. There are few more teeth which are called vomerine teeth because in the upper part we find that there is vomer bone. So near the vomer bone there would be some projections which are known as vomerine teeth. But the most important things which we have to remember here is the tongue, teeth which are present only in the upper jaw and there is an opening of the esophagus which is called the gullet. Gullet actually leads into pharynx and then esophagus. So pharynx is a very small part. Pharynx normally is present where the buccal cavity opens into the esophagus part in the neck region and esophagus passes through the neck region and as frogs do not have neck, pharynx and esophagus is a small part or rather they are small structures. So this is how so, uh, the digestive system is and digestion takes place in case of frog in stomach and duodenum. Now in the next part we will take up another system of